Hey, welcome back to the studio here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Matt Coleman, and we're back digging in the stacks here, getting through this old work. We're still in this portfolio, and you can kind of see this little piece is next here that I'm really pretty pumped about these. I just flipped the flipped the page, saw what I was getting into. It's some pretty interesting work, and this might not look like a whole lot to a lot of you, but I can remember very specifically making this. This is just like in this really crummy apartment that I lived in in Lawrence, Kansas, and looking at my door is open and just looking out in the hallway, and I just drew this. I actually probably did this in the moment because this is a mono print with work done on top of it. This is this thing that I started doing for a while was I'd have a big piece of plexiglass with these mono print colors. I think I had like watercolor crowns too. I can see some kind of hatching through there. But this surface just gets so beautifully worked with like all this like layering of stuff that I was just smashing on there just really kind of haphazardly and getting these like sort of random results here and there. But basically with the mono printing colors it's like a paint a water-based paint that's really easy to reactivate with water and you put it down you paint on your plate or the plexiglass in my case and then uh, you just put the paper down there so you soak the paper it soaks it right up into the paper fibers and there you had like a lot of the tones and like I said I think I had some watercolor crowns because it looked like I started working back into this stuff a little bit and there's some ink done to just bring that out there just this little accent is what I think really brings it all together is you can have a lot of like kind of broad generalized blah spaces like this but you really need something for your eye to hang on to and I think that's why this one came together well but uh I feel like there's a lot of sentimental value to this one just like I can just so specifically remember like the moments that I was making this it's pretty interesting to pull this out and just to see like this process of how I was just like I said just improvisationally like pulling these things together and just feeling like scribble scribble that didn't work okay let's scribble over it with something else and just keep going again this is this is all work that's never been shown anywhere before to anyone unless they were in my my room or my studio and I pulled this this portfolio out and this one here I remember this one well this started as an oil pastel sketch in my sketchbook and this is from uh, the George Webb on Farwell which is no longer there sadly because it was the best George Webb we would go there uh, this was, you know, back when I was in Myad, or just shortly out of Myad, so around 2000 to 2002, and uh, we would just stay there till 2, 3 in the morning sometimes, just drinking coffee, we had, we had no money, we would just sit there and like get the free coffee over and over and smoke a bunch of cigarettes and draw on our sketchbooks, it's like, it's what we did for fun and it was awesome, it was the best times, but uh, when I would, when I had the sketchbook at home, I was just looking at it, and I was really drawn to the layering and like how physical you could see the marks, and I really wanted to try to capture that again, but bigger and more refined. And aside from the original sketch, I think this is probably the best version of it. I did several of these where, like I have mentioned it in another video before, I believe, where I would just go through the same image over and over and try it again and again to get it right because I was just practicing at this point like trying to envision an output that I wanted to get and like achieving that and uh yeah, I think this one was reasonably successful this is another one like the piece before that started as a mono print so like a lot of these broad tones the broad spaces those were all painted onto a piece of plexiglass first and I'd take the paper soak up all the paint with the soaked paper 
and then I really started working hard on top of it and this looks like just a lot of watercolor crowns probably which behaves pretty similar to oil pastels I suppose so that's probably why it worked out pretty well in the end I know the other some of the other versions I did of this I did an oil painting of it that did not work well if there's one thing that I'm not it's an oil painter uh, it just th that medium doesn't make sense to me but uh this one I feel like it came together pretty well and it's such a simple scene again this is like for me this is huge sentimental value but um I don't know maybe someone out there really likes it too maybe somebody that uh remembers the George Webb on Farwell and all the the main highlight of the George Webb on Farwell was all the crazy people that hung out there there was a guy named Troy who wore a pirate hat and he had a parrot on his shoulder sometimes too for real and uh he would hang out with us like he'd sit at a table and talk to us and just like I wonder what happened to Troy hmm this one not bad this is just kind of a random one this is just straight up uh straight up monoprint so like the other pieces that you saw before uh, this is how they might have started and this one I guess I just felt like that was all it needed was just the press and then call it good it's not bad I just uh I'm not like a if you look at my work now it's there's no figurative work whatsoever I do not do figures anymore so uh, anything with people on it, it's just it's not going to be my favorite thing Maybe it could be your favorite thing. I don't know. This is one that I'll put up for a pretty reasonable price. Now this is a pretty nice painting that I liked making at the time. And I like looking at it now. Uh, in my last video that I did, there was, a, there was a watercolor painting that I pointed out. It had the seeds of like the watercolors that I do now. And again... I'm seeing little elements here and there like the way I did this brickwork really methodically and pattern wise and the way I worked those windows up there and stuff it just so directly relates into my work today and like how I approach a lot of the watercolor pieces that I do and I can just see uh, where the interest started I guess because I was obviously paying attention to those things but I had all this other stuff going on around it and I think in when I was in grad school one of the main things that I realized was I didn't need all the other stuff around I could just focus on those little elements and that could be the work and that's why I think my new work is a little more effective than something like this but I mean something like this it's a scene and it's a scene from my life this is again downtown uh, Albuquerque this building back here, if you watched the other video, I had two, like, buildings that had, like, kind of red pyramid shapes on top. Those, that's one of them there. And then the foreground, you just got these other buildings. Uh, I think this is kind of near the Sunshine Theater, I want to say. I don't really know uh, Albuquerque geography too well anymore. So maybe if somebody knows this building, you can correct me if I'm way off, but... It's near, it's on Central Ave, I'm pretty sure. That's, everything's on Central Ave, if you're in Albuquerque. And here's another couple Albuquerque pieces. Uh, uh, not the most interesting ones, but they're there, yeah. This is just like a breezeway between some buildings downtown, and there's like this little dude, I'm pretty sure he's a homeless guy, sitting there, he just got captured in the scene. I did something unusual with like some opaque whites or something on this. Not really a whole lot to say about this one, just another scene from a day in the life of a aspiring artist riding his bike around Albuquerque almost 20 years ago. And this one, this one's another uh, monoprint start. You can see on the back, you can see all that stuff. That's the monoprint ink soaking completely through the paper. I had that pretty loaded up there, apparently. And, uh, yeah, just another street scene from Albuquerque. Can't really, 
identify any of those buildings there. This just looks like a parking garage or something. Pretty good painting or drawing, whatever you want to call it, considering that it's a, of a parking garage. So this one, I kind of like that one quite a bit. I was really into pen and ink back in the day, and uh, this one I was bringing some of that back into this. I, this does look like it was also mono printed. You can see the, the spotting on the back. So I got a lot of mono print going on there, and then define it. I think that might just be straight up mono print actually, which is pretty cool and just defining it with the ink like I did on that doorknob on the other piece. Again, you got the two two big buildings, downtown Albuquerque. It's actually pretty interesting to see this thing here. If you look at uh, the series of work that I did, I wanna say it was around uh, 2013, 14. Before I went to grad school, I started doing a lot of stuff that fixated on uh, rooftop structures things of that nature, and that is like directly out of there again. Finding the seeds of the future in the past, pretty interesting. This is a nice little piece though, if you're familiar with Albuquerque, you might want to give it a good home. This one, I remember liking this a lot when I made it at first. And looking at it now, I don't think my, my color usage or... I should have gone thinner with the colors basically and built my layers more, but... Uh, this is another street scene from Albuquerque downtown. I'm pretty sure this building that I'm catching this uh, the sunset colors in is the Sunshine Theater. But that's what I remember about this one here. Is, uh, I was really into the way the windows were catching the sunset and so I did this sketch of it really quick and took it home and painted it later. This one's kind of smaller. It's a nice size. <clears throat> All right, and this will be the last one for this video here. <clears throat> I really like this one quite a bit. This might be one of my favorite ones in the portfolio. And I like it because it's so simple. It's just like this, I paint, I probably painted this thing in like two minutes. You know, I had this uh, piece of paper taped on my board on the easel for a while and I remember I just went up and I just really quickly started sketching this from a, a sketch out in my sketchbook that I'd taken up into the Sandia Mountains. This is of the Sandia Mountains in Albuquerque. I did that pencil drawing, I just did these like really quick washes over it and it uses, you know, the same blue is in the green, is in the yellow, is in the green, so I really just had like three colors mixed really quickly and I went shh, shh, shh. and I just like looked at it for a second, I was like, I think it's done. I just pulled the tape up and just like this really quick simple gesture to capture um, this nature scene, I think. Uh, I really, I was like, anything else I'm gonna do on this is just gonna be pointless embellishment. There's gonna be too much. Like, this is all you need. And I've actually had like friends or, I can, I can remember one person in specific was like, no, there's so much more you could do with this. I'm like, it doesn't always need to be like the most dressed up thing, the most grand thing ever. Sometimes, I mean, look at the size of this painting. Like, you don't want to overwork it. Like, I think that's what makes it work well too, is if this was like this big and just this quick gesture, then you could argue there's a lot more that you could do with that space. But just in this tiny little frame, I think that is like the perfect amount of visual information to put in there and have it feel like it's holding together nicely, but then what I think uh, the sparseness lets you do is you can imagine, you can fill the rest in with your brain. You can tell that it's a mountain. You can tell it's a landscape. And you know what a landscape is. You know what a mountain is. You've been there before and you can remember the ones that you went to and your brain fills in the rest of the information. 
Yeah. I really like this one. So, hope you like it too. If you like anything that you saw, um, they're all going to be on my Etsy shop, Summit Studios MKE. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter, at Matt Coolman. Uh, Instagram, yeah, I'm on there. Facebook, yeah. You know where to find me. Just look it up. Uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, tune back in. Be pulling some more stuff out. I got a few more pages to go. Um, this is probably, I'm going to get four videos out of doing one portfolio. And man, I got a lot of portfolios around. So I hope you keep watching. Thanks.